try it out. We're going to teach you how to hire champions. We're going to interview uh, experts from other places in the state of California who, uh, how, how would you describe Scott Horn? How would you describe him? Uh, Scott is deeply entrenched in the startup community. Incredibly uh, successful a, background. Very successful. Uh, he was Angie's a, List. An investor in Angie's List, Odesk, Jib Jab. And uh, yeah, he's just a staple out there now. I've he's got a investments in my Cruise nine consultant. grandkids. How's that? Does that count? <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, you got to have money to invest in nine grandkids. Anyway, keep yeah. going. Uh, he is the COO of Cruise Consulting, yeah. and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the employment situation, the startup community. You think we can get him in our cast? Like we we wrangled Tom uh, Heron's Karen's into our. Well, cast. he's not. <laughs> Huh? You, he's a little bit. He's a little bit busy out there. He's what are you about talking 200. about? Who's more busy than Tom Karen sitting in the studio? Well, with we're us? making Tom busy right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> filling his time. <laughs> we'll have Tom on later. Tom's a regular, uh, one of our cast members. He wrote a book, "All Systems Go: How to Launch a Successful Job Search." And Tom's it's our new Bible. Yeah, absolutely, it is it's the employment Bible right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. If you want career, absolutely. If you want to get a job. Uh, I can get you the book for less than $500 a copy. It's called All Systems Go, How to Launch a Successful Job Search. Why not 50% discount? Just well, for how, hey, Tom, how much is the book anyway in Amazon? Uh, seriously. Uh, seriously, uh, I think about $2.13. In Amazon? <laughs> Let me put a premium <laughs> go, on it. Go, this, you I, uh, I searched this that is, one day, and I said, whoa, okay, this looks pretty good. Yeah. I, the list price is twelve ninety five, but I think you can find huge discounts. And we'll then, give the first page for free. Yeah. For okay. free. Today. And then we have a visiting professor from from a very beautiful country, the country of Turkey. Yes, sir. And uh, I want to welcome Ali. How are you, my dear? Thank you, Vero Valeron. <laughs> yeah, and you're you're uh, in your career. You teach young people in Turkey about how to get better careers, right? Yes, I teach uh, career development at the university in Eskişehir, uh, a town uh, called Eskişehir, which means old town uh, yeah. in Turkey. Yeah. Yes. Well, I'm excited to have you in the studio, Thank you. and uh, we'll talk about what's going on in Turkey in a few minutes. But because Scott's with us from San Francisco, let's get him on uh, right off the bat, don't you think? Yes, sir. And uh, Scott Horn, welcome to Southern California, where it's, uh, I believe, 99 degrees outside, and uh, the, uh, the wind is about five miles westerly, and it's just hot as can be. So welcome. How are you, pal? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Coach. It's Thanks an guys. honor. So hope you come back. Cruise Consulting, what do you guys do? Give us a plug for Cruise Consulting. Yeah, you know, we basically help startups get going. We help them do all their financials, all their accounting. We help them get on the right payroll system, benefits, expense management, anything they actually need to get going. Usually it's a couple engineers or someone who's really good at business development or sales who's starting a business. And they're not usually kind of the most financially savvy or, or experts in this stuff. So we get them going. We have about 130 clients, uh, series seed, A and B. So we're really thinking kind of early stage venture capital backed companies is who we concentrate on. And it's been great. My fiance actually started the business and we've been together, we've been together six years and uh, we've been doing the business for four years and we've grown like crazy. So we're having a lot of fun here. Congratulations. You're listening to Scott Horn, everybody on KHTS AM 1220 on the business of life, talking about careers, we're talking about how to uh, hire champions. What, Aaron? What do you want? The pen? There's the pen. Thank you. Uh, so, Scott, let me ask you a question. How important is the hiring process for startups? It's probably the most important thing outside of the initial idea. And the reason for that is, you know, you have to have a, fa a fantastic team to be a successful startup. It's, anyone can design a good PowerPoint. You know, anyone can have just kind of an idea, but it's always an execution. And I think the, the first five hires are really who set the tone both culturally for the company, but also in terms of technology. They set the vision, they set the roadmap. So if you don't hire those first five well, you're never going to really go anywhere. And I think you guys probably know this, digging out from some bad hires is really difficult to do. And so just nailing those first five hires is super important. I can imagine. And I'm not mispronouncing your name. I just roll my uh, H's so it sounds like Horn, but it's really Orn, ladies and gentlemen. Scott Orn. Ah. Yeah, it sounds like uh, Horn, but I'm, I roll my H's. All right, so uh, I agree 100%. I mean, employees can make or break a company, yes or no? Oh, yes. I mean, especially, I think especially startups, because 
you know, there's no kind of corporate overhead. There's no one to pass the buck to. If your team isn't staying late, working hard, and really listening to the customers and listening to what needs to get built, you're just not going to be successful. So it needs to be a harmonious team. It needs to be people who share the same values, that they're going to work hard, and the same common goal. If everyone can, can kind of agree on what the technology is going to be and how you're going to serve the customers, that's how you get that harmonious team, and that's how you're successful as a startup. All right. I've got... 10 more questions, but I know Aaron wants to ask you a question. Our show brought to you by Lisa's Tax Service, everybody. if uh, Look, I know Lisa. Uh, a lot of our clients, a lot of our listeners have used her. She is able to represent you in front of the IRS, Aaron. I'm just saying. Just saying. Mm-hmm. Just in case something happens. You're saying I should call get the her right knock now? On the, well, okay. you can call her. You want her number? 661. Uh, that's the area code. 904 904-2351 for Lisa's tax service. She's very, very good, and, and our listeners have really enjoyed working with her. What, what You wanted to ask Scott a question? I have a few questions. Just and, a few. Uh, by the way, uh, Scott and I, we talk all the time about employment and hiring uh, in any type of company or capacity. But uh, I guess my first question is the... Uh, the whole the the thing with the valuation of companies, the rule of thumb valuation, as uh, or by the number of employees. Uh, I, I remember there used to be this rule of thumb: a hundred thousand dollars per employee. Have you ever heard this, Coach? No. So yeah. I don't. I don't run in your circles, pal. Okay. Yeah, well, you know, I'm Scott and I, collar, we talk about this all day long. I'm a blue-collar you know? <laughs> guy. I don't get in the weeds on this stuff. Here's how I hire people. I yeah. I look at. I look at your resume and then I rip it up. Huh. I follow you out to your car to see if your car has been washed. I right. want to see if you're a smoker. Mm-hmm. And I hire on soft skills. If you're nice and you have a nice smile and you sit up straight and you shake my hand well, and I have, I'm going to tell all of you in a few minutes what are the questions I ask. I have some really cool questions. Yeah. But Scott, is, is there a rule of thumb uh, based on uh, capitalization as to how many employees you should have? You know, the, what Aaron's talking about is there used to be kind of a joke in Silicon Valley that the more engineers you hire, the more your valuation should go up. And so people, you know, when you're really selling a company or the value of the company, it's really a negotiation. It's you and the acquirer or you and the venture capitalist. And, you, you know, it's the law of supply and demand, right? There's only one company to buy, but there may be five investors who want to invest in it, and so the price gets driven up. And so what ends up happening is people kind of do the simple math and say, wow, well, every engineer is worth a million dollars. I guess I should go out and hire more engineers, which uh, we all know is not how it works. And, but there was actually something funny yesterday on Twitter where Spencer Raskoff, the uh, CEO of Zillow, noticed that Twitter bought a company in the U.K. for $150 million, and they only had 12 employees. What? And they were all data scientists. And so Spencer, the CEO of Zillow, which is a you know, huge publicly traded company, said, Time for me to go out and hire some data scientists. So even though oh, that's what I am, no, that's that's what I am. I'm a data scientist. Yeah. That's this room is full with data scientists right Ten now. Ten minutes ago, that's why so many people in here. I was a stupid coach, but now I'm a, I'm a data scientist. Oh, wow. I'm looking up the phone number for Twitter, and you need to message Spencer tonight, and you may have a new job tomorrow. No kidding, oh, boy. Uh, that's the voice of Scott Orn. Everybody, he's with Cruise oh. Consulting. He actually owns the company, and I'm so honored to have him on our show called the business of life with uh, Aaron Moskowitz and the coach here. So uh, when you look at the type of engineer, I mean, I could call myself an engineer, but mm-hmm. I'm now calling myself a data scientist. Uh, how do you how do you assess an employee? When, when, look, startup, you're in the fancy league up there, but down here, anybody starting a company, any entrepreneur listening to our show has to hire or have employees. How do you assess whether that employee uh, has your values or, or has a work ethic like Aaron Moskowitz? You have a great work ethic. Mm-hmm. You work from morning, noon, and night, and seven days a week if you have to. I love that about you. Yeah. So how how do you do that? How do you assess uh, the value, the quality, the integrity of a potential employee, Scott? Yeah. Well, I I do it kind of the same way you do it to start, which is is this person a fit on a personality basis? Can I get along with them? Do I like them? Um, and will they be, and again, a harmonious, uh, you know, work in a harmonious work environment. The second way, and we, we both do this and advise our startup clients to do this, is we like to give people a, a, a contracting assignment. And it may just be something over the weekend. It may be a week. It may be a month. Whatever it is, you actually want to see them work. 
You want to see what kind of questions they ask. You want to see how independent they can be, and you want to see what they come up with. And oftentimes, we actually ask that person to present to us. So you also get to evaluate their verbal skills and how comfortable they are presenting. And I've actually seen this. This is, you know, I know big companies like Zenefit and Gusto, they do this a lot with their, especially their VP hires. You're, con if, you know, you're constantly trying to test and see if that person can deliver what you need while still kind of mitigating your risk a little bit and keeping you know, the amount of money you spent on them and the amount of time you spent on them as small as possible while still getting the results. So, so we're big fans of the test and the, and the short-term contract. Great, great answer. Wow. I mean, that, 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 <laughs> yeah. that, there, there was, uh, yeah, Career 101. His name is Scott Orn. The company is Cruise Consulting. Uh, what do you think, Tom Cairns? You're part of our, our team. I, like, I love, just love what he says. You've you got to give every employee some homework, right? Absolutely. And, and uh, what Scott's pointing out is that regardless of the level within an organization, and especially those that are going to be leading and directing your company, uh, you have to be absolutely certain that they are a good fit because there's also just a few of you. So if you're looking at five people and you have one wrong hire, you've got 20% of your workforce already working in, in the wrong direction. Yeah, so so you're in trouble. So testing it out ahead is uh, is wise now this may come as shock to our listeners and all of you in the studio but here's my question here's one of my i have like 15 top ready for my question how many pennies would it take to fill up this room <sighs> all right so the show is called the business of life and uh, uh tom karen's aaron moskowitz uh ali's here with me visiting from turkey and uh, that's my question. How many pennies would it take to fill up this room? I want to see. Really not I want Scott. You know. No, I didn't ask Scott the question. <laughs> okay. I asked you the question. You know. I mean, I say, look you at know, three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand. Yeah. I want to see how you think. I want to see how you answer the question. Don't you think, Scott Orn, a asking some question totally unexpected by the interviewee gets mm -hmm. a some reaction from them and and certainly from you? What do you think of a question oh. like that? Absolutely. I think, uh, I think, Coach, before you were a data scientist, I think you were a management consultant because that's the kind of question that management consultants ask. So if you go interview at Bain and McKinsey, which are these big, high flutin' consulting firms, and, you know, Tom may have actually employed some of them at Homeland Security to work through really complex problems. Did you, Tom? So, we did. Sure. You did, really? Sure. Isn't that top secret? Yeah. <laughs> No. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Okay. Once, once yeah. I tell you, I have to shoot you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, the people they're looking to hire are very good at abstract questions like that. And kind of, I'm, I, you know, first of all, I was not a consultant, so I never made the cut. But the way you're kind of trained to answer that question, if you want to be a consultant, yeah. is to break it down into a lot of different parts. So you might start with how wide is a penny, and maybe a penny is an inch, there and maybe go. there's 12 I like this and, and people who say they didn't make the cut, they yeah. actually worked for the CIA. No, but I, that's <laughs> mean. That's mean. All right? That's really mean. Uh, and I, that's, uh, his name is Aaron Moskowitz. If you're with this, we have a lot of CIA in this area, Southern California. Aaron Moskowitz is his name, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hey, Scott, hang in there with us. You are a great radio guest. Uh, hang in there as long as you can. I want to get on the uh, 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 live air here, her first time in the United States on live radio, KHTS AM 1220. Allie, welcome. How are you? Thank you. I'm good. So uh, in Turkey, uh, let me ask you this question. In America now, not, not my generation, uh, we used to have a job for 20, 30 years. Now, every, like Aaron's generation, he's a young baby kid here. They move around every, what do you have? Like you have uh, five every, jobs in a year? Every I mean, 30 days, every, yeah. yeah. In Turkey, yeah. Uh, do people stay in their jobs for any length of time? Well, they used to, but uh, in Turkey, things are changing. So they are <laughs> moving, you know, one job to another. Yeah. But um, one thing is different, I think, in Turkey, the government government jobs are the safest. So my students actually want like to work for the government? A, yes. Because okay. you can't get fired? Yes. Now, in America, government jobs... Much more secure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, in America, and, and you can jump in, uh, Mr. Karens, if you want, but in America, I think federal jobs, state jobs, local jobs pay 20 to 30% more. Same thing in Turkey than... than well, uh, the government jobs are actually not paying much, but... Uh, you have much more security from the uh, they don't they don't pay more than they don't pay more okay uh, but uh, 
you are more secure with the job. Yeah. They don't fire you. Okay. No, same thing. Mm. Same thing. It's hard. Impossible. If you work for the federal government, Tom, and I don't want to beat you up uh, now <laughs> that you're not with the government anymore. <laughs> but it, it, yes, did you want to say uh, something? In those days, it's really hard to get a job. So that's why they want the government jobs, you know. It's hard to get the job. Yeah, yeah. that's why. Even yeah. though they pay yeah. less. Here, now the, in Turkey, you were telling me that you have to have a degree, correct? Yes, exactly. Uh, University d- degree. What about uh, for the federal government, uh, Tom, Karen? It, it depends on uh, the level. I mean, there are uh, positions, obviously, the same as you'd have in corporate life that don't require a degree, and then there are others that do now, require Now, is there a, a favorite degree. college that uh, that you like to hire from because they have the brightest people? <laughs> <laughs> Best football team. <laughs> and, it, and it starts with an O. <laughs> yes. Uh, did you want to say Oregon Ducks? It sounds like Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people from Southern California are, are heading to Oregon and go to the University of Oregon. So in the United States, uh, what would you say, Tom, is a very popular job uh, that people want to do? Airline pilots, maybe? Uh, you know, it probably is. It varies, uh, I would imagine. Uh, boy, a popular job that people would want. <laughs> Just give me one. All right, forget <laughs> it. Uh, Aaron, well, you're uh, next. Uh, what would be I'd a popular a, job? A big one is law enforcement. Law enforcement? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, it, well, as, as far as I just give you an example, you, you mentioned Homeland Security. Yeah. The majority of employees at Homeland Security have a law enforcement background or, or were in law or military or military. Now, did you do right. the air marshals, wow. too? We did the air marshals. Now, I just flew back from Hawaii. So, I mean, there must have been, I don't know, 5,000 people on the plane. Just seemed like a lot of people. Do you think there was an air marshal uh, on the plane? I have no idea. They don't usually tell you where they're going to they be. They don't, do they? No. I think that's one thing about Homeland Security that I really like for some reason is the air marshals. Yeah. So yes. what do you think is a popular job in the United States? What would you want to do? Oh, what I would like to well, do? Well, what would uh, be a popular job? I don't know. Anything in a nice office. I mean, I, I just saw the new building really? for Fannie Mae. Really? Did nice you see the office? new Fannie Mae building? Fannie no. Mae? No. Oh, my God. It's it's like, it looks like. You don't want to be like be a- left fielder for the Dodgers? That's a government job? No, I'm <laughs> saying oh, what man. is a popular job? <laughs> Oh, uh, all right. You think about. It. Let me get. Back yeah, to let Allie. me think about uh, that. There's so a lot of them. So in Turkey, out there. Allie, what what would be a popular job? <laughs> well, for teenagers, actually, dream job is being a football player, or you call it soccer. soccer. Yeah. <laughs> really? Football is a big thing in Turkey. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but. Yeah, maybe also in our country, maybe being a professional athlete would be. You know, a rapper, professional athlete. Rapper. Yeah. I would like to be. Yes, Allie. But for adults. Do you know what a rapper is? No. No? No. <laughs> no rapping in Turkey? You know what? Uh, it's, it's a form of, uh, I was going to say medicine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a form of music. Uh, it's the way you preserve food. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Orn. Uh, what would you think? Scott Orn's our special guest from Cruise Consulting, and hopefully he'll be a regular on our show. Scott, what would you think would be a popular job in the United States? You know, I, from where I am, it's entrepreneur. You know, in the Bay Area, Attaboy. people are really yeah. getting into just wanting to start something and yeah. build their company and, and dream big. I think that's one, been one of the, the great things about kind of the Internet revolution, and even like the last five years. It's become a lot easier to start something. And, you know, maybe 30 or 40 years ago, people were comfortable at a desk job or working for a large corporation, but it feels like culturally... The country has shifted quite a bit. Yeah, no, I love that, and I'm an entrepreneur, and I want to talk about that after the break. The failure rate is very high. We were talking about that. Yeah, we were talking about this earlier, and I have my own views. In Turkey, Ali, is entrepreneur. You know what entrepreneur is? Is that a big thing? Yes, it is a big thing. Mm -hmm. And we're going to take a break and come back. I want to talk a little bit when we get back about what you teach at your university. What's the uh, name of it? Can you pronounce it in English? Oregon? No? No? Career development. We're going to come back here on the show. (laughs) I'm an Oregon duck. All right, we're going to come back. The show is called The Business Life. Wonderful uh, committee here, wonderful guest here. Scott Orn, Cruise Consulting, San Francisco. Tom Karen's a part of our cast. And also, uh, Aaron Moskowitz, maybe, and I'm not exaggerating, ladies and gentlemen, when I say this, because I, I deal with uh, Aaron every day, maybe one of the best researchers in the country and also on his way to becoming a data scientist. We'll be right back on the show. We yes, call sir. the Business of Life, brought to you by Lisa's Tax Service. If you need somebody that's smart, call her, 661 area code 904 2351. She's the best. I'm telling you, she's really the best if you have tax problems or issues. We'll be right back. 